Good evening. Welcome to WOC Wednesday night. Glad you're with us. Uh, we really enjoy these Wednesday nights when we can just sit down and get into the Bible, study some subjects, and uh, and uh, uh, we know from the scriptures, Jesus told us if we know truth, truth will make us free. And so just taking time to do this, and, and there are things we'll repeat, you know, the Bible um, in, in dealing with certain subjects. Um, I, somebody said a long time ago that uh, repetition is the power of the teaching ministry. So some things we'll just kind of, we'll just cover it from a number of different angles. We'll, we'll turn over every rock. We'll, you know, we'll look behind every, every issue and we'll, we'll find truth and truth will make us free. So we're going to stay on the subject. We've been on, oh, for a number of months now, subject of healing. Uh, you know, I'm, for the price Jesus paid to get us healed, then it's a shame that we don't tap into that more often. Uh, I don't mean it in a critical way, but the bottom line, I'm, I'm on a quest. I'm looking for answers. It cost heaven as much to get me healed as it did to get me saved. Um, I know the blood of Jesus, the precious blood is what purchased my salvation, but salvation includes healing. And so, you know, I don't have to choose which one I want, but it cost heaven as much to get me healed as it did to get me saved. So if it's that valuable to God, then uh, it's valuable to me. And, uh, and I don't like seeing people sick. I don't like being sick. I don't like seeing folks sick. Uh, I like seeing people get healed and set free. So um, we, we spent a number of weeks talking about the, uh, uh, the healing miracles of Jesus' ministry. Okay, um, There's 20-some-odd uh, cases of uh, individual healings. Uh, there were times when Jesus healed the whole multitude. As many as touched him were made whole, for they went virtue out of him and healed them all. And so there are times we go back through and see that. But yet there are about 20 some odd, I'd say 27, 28 um, individual healing miracles in the ministry of Jesus. And so we've gone back through a number of those. Of course, you know, it, that would take us a year to go through all that. But we've kind of hit some high, high points and covered the, the healing miracles of Jesus ministry. Well, then we went from there into, uh, oh goodness, a number of weeks, I think maybe four weeks on <clears throat> what we called the... Um, misconceptions in other words there are certain cases in the bible certain for certain cases that we've we've somehow gotten them a little misconstrued okay we've gotten misconceptions on things so we went back through and uh, i discovered a long time ago that the scripture tells us jesus even said uh when you know truth truth makes you free and i discovered a long time ago the certain things that i had learned or believed or been told and they were actually keeping me bound instead of getting me set free. So I thought, if it doesn't make me free, maybe it's not truth. So I went back through and began to study these, these individual cases and take them apart, put them back together, dissect them, re, re, you know, reconnect them. Uh, everything from uh, Job's boils, Paul's thorn, Timothy's stomach, Trophimus, who was, less, who was left sick at Miletum, uh, the blind man in John 9, Lazarus, John 11. Um, certain cases that were taught in a way that wasn't producing freedom. So we, we went back and, and, and dissected those, put them, put them back together. And I, I know truth makes you free, makes us free. So anyway, so I want to um, continue on uh, the subject of healing, but I'm going to go a whole different direction. This will probably take us oh, tonight and maybe, uh, maybe another two weeks, something like that, maybe three, I'm not real sure. Uh, it depends on how slow we go with this, but this is this is a teaching in the, the Old Testament that's been a real blessing to me so many times over the years, and so I'm going to take this apart and share it share it with everybody out there. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go back to Proverbs chapter four, verse twenty. For for many of us, this should be a real familiar setting. Uh, technically, I hope it is. I hope this is the hundredth time we've heard this. Because again, t uh, teaching the teaching ministry uh, is is enhanced by repetition. So anyway, Proverbs chapter four verse twenty. And now to look at this, we see that <clears throat> Proverbs primarily is, is was written by uh, Solomon. Solomon was known as the wisest man known to humanity until Jesus came on the scene. So you're talking about uh, a book of wisdom. All right, Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Um, you know, a lot of uh, uh, seminars, uh, self-help seminars, motivational seminars, a lot of things like that 
uh, really, even if they don't use the scriptures, a lot of their principles are taken out of the book of, uh, uh, of Proverbs because it is a book of wisdom. So anyway, we come through here in, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Uh, Solomon here is saying, now we, could, now we could look at this two ways. We could say Solomon is saying to his son, or we could say God is saying to his sons. Same thing. Okay, let's take the second one and just say this is God talking to us. All right? Uh, we, we know from the scriptures, Jesus made us to be sons of God. Okay, children of God. So looking at this, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, the author, God, says, My son, that writing to us specifically, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they, my words, are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now, just these, these first 20, 21, 22, these first three verses uh, give us such insight into something here. Um, first of all, it proves out God wants us to have life and health. He wants us to have abundant life and abundant health. He doesn't want us to be concerned about our health or our wealth. He wants us to have abundant life. That proves it right there. God wouldn't tell us how to get it. If it wasn't available, he wouldn't say, here's how you get it. But you just never know what I might do, because sometimes I want you blessed and sometimes I don't want you blessed. And if it wasn't the will of God, he wouldn't have told us how to get it. The simple fact that he told us how to tap into this proves that it is God's will for every one of us. All right. Now, he says here, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine, thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Now, verse 22, for they, they what? They who? They my words. The subject matter right here is the words, God's words, subject matter. They, my words, are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Let's just take that verse for a few minutes. These, my words are life. Now, now life, um, in, in looking at the scriptures, if you, go, if you were to look in the New Testament, um, Jesus said, I've come that you might, uh, John 10, 10, the thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Uh, when he talks about life, it is a, in general, when God's talking about life, um, it's in the New Testament, it's the word zoe, Z-O-E. It's the word zoe, and it's not a length of time. He didn't say, I've come that you might have life, uh, you know, have, uh, you know, 80 years, 85, whatever. He didn't, he wasn't talking about uh, uh, quantity. He's talking about quality. The word zoe in the New Testament, the word zoe uh, is life, but technically, if you go back and study that word out, it's life as God has it. It's abundant life. It's not just a long time on earth. Long time on earth isn't all that good if it's miserable. Sick, broke, depressed, discouraged. You know, that, that's, that's not great. No, but when he's, he's not talking about uh, uh, quantity of life, although that's a part of it. Long life is a blessing of God, but it's a quality of life. New Testament, I've come that you might have life. Zoe, life. Uh, again, one one author says life as God has it. That means healthy. That means blessed. It means taken care of. It means free from depression. It means free from oppression. It's just, I mean, stop thinking. What's God? How's, how's God's life? It's pretty good. And Jesus said, "I've come that you might have life. That you might have that same, not just quantity, but quality of life." Now, if you swing this back to the Old Testament, it's another word actually out of the Hebrew, uh, but it's. It's life, and it's really the same thing. So back here, the author says, for they, my words, are life. They, they'll, they will produce abundant life. It's not just longevity, although that is a part of it, but he says, they, my words, are life. They're abundant life. Abundant life means uh, not sick, not broke, not sorry, not depressed, not discouraged, um, et cetera, et cetera. It means abundant life, well taken care of. Uh, so in looking at that, first thing is my words are number one, they're life. OK. And number two, they're um, health to all their flesh. My, my words are life. Now, he says my words are life to those that find them. That doesn't mean, well, you know, that means, well, you know, man, I left my Bible at church and, and, and it got in the lost and found. And, I, you know, I went back and got it like three months later. So I'm going to start reading it again. So I found the words. No, no. When he says, my words are life to those that find them, the word find doesn't mean, well, I finally located my Bible. Okay. Doesn't mean find as in locate. The, it, the word find means to grasp. 
My words, they, my words are life to those that grasp them. Sometimes we quit too soon. Sometimes we read the scriptures, read a couple of verses, maybe even memorize them, put them to memory. That's good. Nothing wrong with that. But sometimes we quit. We get it for, to memory. We get it up here, but we stop before we get it lodged down here. My words are life to those that find them, grasp them, take hold of them. So in other words, stick with my words until my words stick with you. Luke 9, 44, Jesus said, let these sayings sink down into your, uh, into your ears. Let these sayings sink down into your ears. Well, you know, I don't know about you. My ears are not down there. Up. Okay. He, he, so he's not talking about just letting these sayings sink into these ears. He's talking about let my words sink down into your inward man, into the ears of your inward man. Let them get on the inside. So the, the subject is the word. Okay. The activity, the action of that is to stick with the word until it gets on the inside, which would probably tell us that if we'll stick with the parts of the word that we need working in our lives, then it's going to help us. You know, if you need healing, feed on what the Bible says about healing. You know, if you're broke, financially having trouble, see what the Bible says about God taking care of you, meeting all your need. What it, Treat the word like seed, and whatever seed you sow, don't get it just in these ears and just up in here, cerebral. Let it get down on the inside. So he says here, verse 22, they, my words, <laughs> think about this. My words are life. They're, they're quantity, quality, life as God has it. My, they, my words, are life unto everybody. No, everybody that has a Bible. No, everybody that carries it has, a, has it in their watch or on their iPad. No, no, it doesn't matter how many copies of the Bible you have. It, does, it doesn't even mean if you just read a couple scriptures every day. That's great, but it's not how many you read or how fast you read it or how often you read it. It's, it's taking time. If we'll just take the time to get this on the inside of us, okay, stick with it. I remember taking a side trip here. We're not in a rush. I remember um, it would have been 1970, probably 1974. Um, I had just gotten my life right with God in uh, November 72. Was at college for a couple more terms. Went uh, back to my hometown. I actually moved back in with my parents at the time. Figure out what I'm going to do with my life now. Um, and and uh, I, I'd, I'd gotten a real estate license, uh, right? I mean, right after high school. Graduated from high school, got the big thick book on real estate laws, etc. Read the book, took the test, passed it. I am now a, I don't know anything about real estate, but I'm a licensed real estate agent. Okay. Uh, and so, um, you know, I, I uh, when I moved back home, left college to figure out what I'm going to do with my life now. Knew God had something for me to do, but I didn't know what that meant. I, I didn't know what a call of God was. Um, just knew I was supposed to do something for God, but I just didn't know where, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to go. So, um, I, uh, so I, I activated my license, had it hanging on the wall in a real estate company, activated my license, began working in the, 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 the real estate field, learning as I went along, um, didn't work out real well, uh, because, uh, I didn't know anything about selling. I didn't know anything about real estate. I just had a license. So I'm working at this and I'm not doing real well. I'm not selling anything. My listings aren't selling. It's a real slow process. Okay. And when you're only working on commission only, uh, man, you can get hungry at times. Okay. There was no salary involved in this. It was just, if you don't sell, you don't eat. And so, uh, so I, uh, I just, sales weren't going well. So I began to pray about this long story short. Um, I, you know, I fasted, I prayed, I did everything. You know, I got to the altar at church, begged, pleaded with God, God, meet my needs, and et cetera, et cetera. Well, I did all that. Nothing's working. I'm not making any money. It's not a good, it's not working well at all. Okay. So one day I said, God, I'm just, I, I give up. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give up. I'm just going to read my Bible. Now, so if I'd have started there instead of ending up there, I'd have saved myself a lot of grief time. But I went into one of the offices, sat down, uh, opened my Bible, just really let it fall open. Didn't know where to start. And I got to Philippians, the fourth chapter. And uh, re I'm reading the fourth chapter, just as good as any other chapter. It looked like that to me. And I got to reading the fourth chapter. I got to the 19th verse. It says, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That, that was a short enough verse. I mean, I read it twice, had it memorized, had put it to memory. 
Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Got it memorized. I go out, I get in my car, I'm driving around the countryside looking for property that I could list, uh, get it listed on the books, etc. cetera. Um, and I'm thinking about that verse. Now, I, I, I could quote it, I memorized it, but I didn't believe it. It's one thing to get it up here, it's something else to get it down here. Okay, now, I'm not changing subjects. We're still on, on Proverbs 4, 9, uh, 4, 20, 21, 22. So, uh, yeah, this went on actually for a number of days where that verse just wouldn't leave me alone. I thought about it when I woke up in the morning. I thought about it when I went to sleep at night. Philippians 4, 19, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Okay, I, I had memorized it and I'd learned it, but I hadn't grasped it. And that's what Proverbs is talking about. My words are life to those that grasp them. It didn't really work for me until I grasped that. I got hold of that. Well, um, I, I just remember thinking about that when I'm driving around, driving through neighborhoods, looking for houses I can try to get a listing on, so on. And uh, <clears throat> all of a sudden, I'm thinking about that. The only way I can describe it is I almost, I sensed it. I'll put it that way. I sensed that verse going from here, and it just all of a sudden slid down on the inside. It dropped on the inside. I didn't feel it, okay? But I had a sense of all of a sudden it went from I believe it to I believe it. It went from I got this to I got this. If you know what I mean. Man, all of a sudden, I, didn't, I, I couldn't describe it to you. I couldn't wrap words around it. But all of a sudden, you talk about grasping something. That was, 19, I think, 1974. And once that, once that got inside me and I got a grasp on that, it's changed my life. Well, you know, we're going on, what, going on uh, 50 years, something like that, long time. And um, changed my life. My words are life to those that grasp them. I remember we were doing youth meetings at the time. A number of young people had gotten saved. We we're having youth meetings almost every night somewhere. And, uh, and the kids would come up and they'd say, you know, have you made any money yet? And normally I'd say, no, I haven't. Uh, they'd, they'd say, have you sold anything yet? No, I haven't. How's it going? It's not going good. You know, real estate's tough. I'm not making any money. Something changed. I, I grasped something. <laughs> I went back to the next youth meeting and a couple of kids came up and said, have you sold anything yet? And without thinking, I heard myself say, my God supplies all my need. According, to, I didn't know you're supposed to confess the word. Nobody told me that. I hadn't read that, didn't know anything about it. But I said, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. One of the kids said, well, yeah, I think I know that's in the Bible, but have you sold anything? Again, I tried to say no, but I heard my, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. All of a sudden, I heard myself say, my God supplies all my need. Somebody said, yeah, yeah, but have you sold, have you made any money? I'm trying to say no, but all it rolls out of the inside of me is what I'd grasped. Okay, when I tried to, tried to get it up here, I had to get it in the realm of reason, and it wasn't working. When I stuck with it till it stuck with me, it got on the inside. And uh, I just said, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Well, anyway, these, the kids just wandered off. They thought I'd gone crazy. All I can say is that's 1974. Here we are a couple of years later, all right? And that got on the inside of me. Now, I refresh it on a regular basis. That got on the inside of me. I, when I did grasp that, it wasn't like, well, I just found my Bible or I opened my Bible or I read my Bible. It's when my Bible got in me, okay, got on the inside. <laughs> so what he's saying here, verse 22, they, my words, are life to those that find them. They will produce life. They will produce abundance. They'll produce blessing. They'll produce freedom from depression. They'll, anything that's, that, that's wrong it says, my life, my, my words are life to those that find them. And now, and verse 22, and health to all their flesh. Now I can see we're not going to get very far tonight. I'm glad we got a few more weeks. But I want to take time to slow down on this and discover the importance and the power of the, of the written word of God. People go from meeting to meeting looking for somebody to give them a word. I got you a word. I got 66 books of words. I'm not opposed to that. I don't despise prophesying, but I can get 101 words given to me. Might work, might not work. Might not even be the Holy Ghost. Might be somebody's own interpretation on things. But I'll tell you, I got a book of words, the Bible, and that is the word God will hasten, watch over to perform. And he says, my words are life to those that find them 
and health to all their flesh. All right. Now let's just look at that for a moment where it says health, health to what? All their flesh. Now, see, I, this is where I want to make a I want to make a switch over. Number one, number one, his word isn't just it. We're not talking just about healing. We're talking about abundance in our life. My words are life to those that find them and health to. I love that health to what? All all what? Well, you know, I've had people say, well, brother, you just have to you just have to understand God does heal. But, you know, he just he just heals spiritually. And I've had people give me every excuse you can think of. But, you know, I like to just let the word speak for itself. When he says here, my words are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Think about that. From cancer to colds, from, from uh, 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 cancer to colitis, from colds and flu and arthritis. And think about that. Tumors, knots, lumps, growths, depression, um, Alzheimer's, dementia. I don't care what it is. If it's got anything to do with our flesh, he says, my word will take care of it. For they, my words, are life to those that find them. And this is the part we're going to spend more time on. But it's not just strictly one side. It's abundant life and health in our bodies. So in looking at this, for they, my words, are life unto those that find them. And health, health to all their, <laughs> all their flesh. Well, you know, some things God just can't heal. No, he said health to all their flesh. Well, some things we've just never seen anybody get healed of. Health to all their flesh. Doesn't matter what's wrong with your flesh. God's got a cure for it. Okay? I mean, think about that. My words are life to those that find them. Health to all their flesh. Uh, the word health there means they'll just, they're just health. It's health. Health to keep your flesh healthy. If you're not sick, it'll keep you healthy. People say, well, you know, for, a lot of times we wait until we get sick before we start doing something about sickness. But he said, if you feed on my words, you get, your, you get my word in you, it'll be health to all your flesh. You don't have to wait and get healed. It'll keep you healthy. My words are health, number one, health to all their flesh. Another translation says healing to all their flesh. Well, you know, I'm not healthy. I've, I've gotten sick. Now I need healing. Well, it'll be health to all your flesh or it'll be healing to all your flesh margin of a bible i've got at home has a notation in the column uh that says the word health is the word medicine that's my favorite my words are medicine to all their flesh medicine to all their flesh medicine to all their flesh in other words god's got one medicine that'll that'll fix whatever ails us okay if it's a headache if it's a if it's a if it's a foot ache if it's a if it's a Something, if it's a pain in the neck, all right, if it's something wrong with the back, if it's a tumor, if it's, uh, if it's arthri arthritis, I don't, it doesn't matter. If it has to do with the flesh, God's got a cure for it. My words are life to those that find them, health to all their flesh, healing to all their flesh, medicine to all their flesh. The thing about medicine is, um, um, th this is a great thought. Wouldn't it be wonderful if medical science came up with a pill? one bottle of pills and it'll fix anything that ails you all right i mean one one bottle of pills you don't have to have a dozen different kinds you know don't have to have one for this one for this one for this four for this three for this so many pills you haven't got room for food anymore it's not just getting all these pills think if medical science was brilliant enough to come up with one pill that would fix anything that's wrong with your flesh okay and Add that to it. What if medical science could come up with one pill that would give you abundance in your life? Okay. And health for your flesh, healing for your flesh, medicine to all your flesh. All you got to do is take it. All you got to do is take it. Wouldn't it be wonderful? Wouldn't it be wonderful if you could just stop by the pharmacy and the, uh, the pharmacist would give you a bottle of pills like this. Say, just take one a day. You know, just take one a day. Say, Doc, Doc, I, I got a pain in my neck. Here, just take one of these. Doc, I, I've got arthritis. Take, just take one of these. I, I, I've got stomach problems. Take one of these. Uh, oh, you know, I, I've got, I got uh, chest pains. Here, just take one of these. I, I'm broke. Take one of these. I'm discouraged. Here, take one of these. I'm depressed. Take one of these. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all of a sudden medical science said, here's a bottle of pills, whatever ails you, it'll fix it. It'll give you abundant life. 
It'll give you health in your body. It'll give you healing in your body. It'll give you, it's medicine for all your flesh. If it has to do with your flesh, this will fix it. Wouldn't it be wonderful? One pill takes care of everything. I mean, I mean, you know, hey, if, if somebody found something like that, the pharmaceutical companies would pay them billions to not put it on the market. Think how much money they'd lose. But if they could find that, if they found that, they'd just still be a step behind God because God said, I got a pill that'll cure whatever ails you. It'll, it'll, be, um, it'll be life to, to you, abundant life, not just quantity, but quality. It'll be life to you, and it'll be health to your flesh, healing to your flesh, medicine, medicine it, to all your flesh. It'll take care. Think about it. If medical science could do that, they, I'm sure they never will because the devil keeps coming up with new diseases. Anything from AIDS to COVID-19 to the, the variants and et cetera. Okay. But think about that. If they could do that. But God said, I got one pill that will fix anything. I have one pill. If you'll just take it, it'll fix anything. It's called the gospel. <laughs> so, I know. Corny joke. All right. I'm glad I can't see the people that are rolling their eyes and going, oh, great. Anyway. The, you know, God's got one pill that'll fix whatever ails us, and he's made it so available, he puts it all into one book and says, my words, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear into my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they, my words, are life unto those that find them, health, healing, and medicine to all their flesh. Now, my question is this. If, you know, you had a particular ailment say you had uh, digestive problems or maybe you've got respiratory problems maybe you've got um an infection maybe maybe you've had an infection in your lungs or or whatever um and you 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 go to the doctor and again nothing wrong with doctors we're not opposed to doctors they fight from the natural we fight from the supernatural but we're all we all know sickness is an enemy okay and say you go to a doctor and he says okay uh here uh, go by, go by the pharmacy and pick this up. I've got a, I've got a cure. Um, this is the best thing we've got to, to drive that out of your, out of your system. Well, your thing is you go pick that up and, and take it home and go, I have the cure for what ails me. This will fix my lungs, my heart. This will fix my joints. This will fix my head, my headache. Um, you know, th this will fix a bunch of stuff in my body. OK, you take it home, you put it on the shelf and you walk by every day and go, man, I got I've got this great pill. Then the stuff just works. I've got I have an antibiotic that just fixes anything. OK, and you walk by every day and go, man, that's good, man. I'll tell you, the doctor said this. This is a proven fact. This will really work. This is the hottest thing on the market. And you walk by it day after day after day after day after day until it's a, until the thing expires. <laughs> OK, see, the thing is, you can have something that's health healing medicine to your flesh from a natural standpoint and the spiritual standpoint but it's not going to do us any good if we don't take it you can carry it around you can have it in your briefcase you can carry it in your car you can have it in your office you can have it in the medicine cabinet have it on the counter you can put it in the refrigerator anywhere you might see it every day but it's when it's when we learn to take it okay and so the author here, the book of wisdom, he doesn't just stop us here cold and go, man, we have something that'll be life to you and health, healing medicine to all your flesh. But you, have to, you still need to take it. OK, you need to partake of that. So so. Starting in verse 20, let's see what he says. We'll we'll finish up here and then we'll pick up next week. He said, my son, attend to my word. Subject is the never underestimate the power of God's word. Well, it's just a Bible. No, it's the only book on earth that's alive. The only book on earth that God says, I will hasten, watch over my word to perform it. You believe it, I'll do it. You declare it, I'll bring it to pass. My, my son, attend to my words. Okay, you can try anything else. You can try religions. You can try self-help stuff. You can try meditation. You can try anything. If you find something that works, great. But we've got a surefire deal here. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings, let them not depart from thine eyes, keep them in the midst of thine heart. So he's given us, how do I take this? Now we'll cover this over the next few weeks, but number one, attend to my word. Number two, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Number three, let them not depart from thine eyes. Number four, keep them or guard them in the midst of thine heart. There's four parts to taking this. Now, now if, if you were, um, uh, oh goodness, 
you know, if you were told to do such and such, if you, if you again, medical science, the best example we got, if the, the doctor said, well, you know, it's going to take a few treatments of this. I need you to come back to my office um, every Friday morning, nine o'clock for the next six weeks. All right. You, you'd probably do it. OK, you wouldn't go, doctor, I rebuke you if you can't do it in one side. Uh, no. You know, if you if, if the doctor said, come back every Friday morning, nine o'clock for the next six weeks and we're going to we're going to knock this thing out. You I'm, I guarantee you, if you had to get an Uber to get you there, you'd get there. Why? Because the doctor said, if you'll get if you'll come and take this, it'll it'll work for you. Well, let's give God the same credit. Let's give God the same credibility. God said, my words are life to all your flesh. It's abundant life and health healing medicine to all your flesh. Abundant life for you if you just take it. If you take it, you don't have to go to the doctor's office. You don't have to go get surgery. You don't have to take injections. You don't have to do any of that. Just take his instructions. How does that work? Come back next week. We'll start working on this. God made it so simple. But the first thing is, number one, my son, attend to my words. Starting point, 101, ABCs of faith, ABCs of healing. Put, put a confidence in the word and then find how to get the words off the page not only into our minds, but down into our hearts where we can grasp them. Well, that's enough for tonight. Uh, appreciate you joining in. And uh, <clears throat> I, I will make you a guarantee. If you'll do what God says, if you'll do what God says, you will see a difference in your life and your health. Okay? It's his will. It's his plan. If we'll just do what he asks us to do. So anyway, we'll do that. Glad you tuned in. Um, this is Wednesday night. We'll be back in next Wednesday night and pick up from here. And we'll, we'll do maybe three or four weeks in a row because this is important enough to do it. If God makes it this simple, the best thing we can do is, is step out and, and be not just hearers of the word only, but doers thereof. So, so anyway, anyway, and you know, we get talking about this and, and all of a sudden there it is. Uh, it, there's some folks being healed out there just by just by hearing the word tonight. There's some folks being healed out there. There's somebody, you've been having some pains in your chest. You haven't had it. I don't think you've had it diagnosed. You haven't had it looked at. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm saying I don't think you have. You've been having some, um, what I call alarming symptoms. Now, I, bottom line, go, go get it checked out. Nothing wrong with that. But I'll tell you what, uh, the power of God's coming on you even right now. Somebody else, you've had an issue in your back. Uh, you've, you've been living with pain down through your back. And I'm telling you, I'll, I'll take a step beyond that. Not only are you sensing a difference, but there is a, it, it's almost like heat or electricity going up and down your spine. You can almost literally feel that. Power God's healing that right now. Somebody else, your elbow, one of your, one of your elbows, you've got tendonitis. Just start moving it. You're, you're, the healing power of God's flowing into you right now in the name of Jesus. Okay? Somebody, you've got beginning signs of arthritis in a number of your um, knuckles on your hand or hands. Um, start moving that, start moving that. Say, I receive it. I receive my healing. I receive my healing to power. Of God's just healing folks right now. You mark my words in the weeks to come. There's going to be a lot of healings that'll take place as they do. Uh, send us an email. Let us know. We love to hear the good reports that you've taken hold of what God made available to you.